the digital world that we all currently live in has given us many blessings and many often unintended consequences. And one of them is perhaps how we view our families. Often we can see what's posted online uh, and that it's a carefully curated series of photos and posts and things like that. And usually there are happy times, big events, things that are, you know, people want to share. And these are wonderful things. It's good to share our lives with others, to share them with our families and friends. But often, as is the case with uh, human beings, we can take that and think that, oh, their life is perfect. Everything's great. Nothing bad ever happens. We see that with all these other people that we see online. And so then we often make that a judgment upon perhaps our own family lives. But as we all know, we don't live in snapshots. Those are very, like I said, very one moment, a slice in time, often great times. But we still manage to find ourselves comparing ourselves to those perfect times. And when you're afraid, raising a family, that is a very difficult place to put yourself. Raising a family is hard, and it is only made harder by making impossible demands and impossible comparisons. Families are difficult and messy. But God has decided that is the institution, the group, that he wants to work through. And that has become the basis of our salvation and his plan. And we see that in today's first couple of readings. We hear about the patriarch Abraham, whom God called out of the land of the Chaldeans to receive the promises. Abraham had a play, has a privileged place in history. And often, usually with places of privilege come a lot of perks, right? A lot of benefits. But God did not give him perks and benefits that prevented him from struggling in his family life. Abraham had to wait until his advanced years to have a son. And he had to constantly pick up his family and move from place to place. He wandered first from his own land, then up and down the Holy Land that was promised to him. And then even after God promised the child, it's a little bit abbreviated in today's reading, but even after God promises that child, there is still a period of waiting before that child is given. And yet Abraham had to have faith through all this, through that time, as God spoke to him and promised him and made covenants with him. And this is often something that faces families in our world today. Families often face struggles, waiting, perhaps having difficulty having children, and it can be a few, huge restraint on their relationship. It leads to hard feelings and disappointment. And then, of course, families also face the struggles and stresses of moving a lot, just like Abraham going back and down the Holy Land, never quite settling in one place. In our world today, people often move, and sometimes, if you have children, that means new schools, making new friends, and that's also hard for children and families. But the lesson is that God works in his own way, in his own time. For example, obviously, after God had given Abraham, his, the son that he was promised, God then asks him to sacrifice Isaac. And this shows, this story, as we all know, ultimately God does not ask for Isaac's life. He was testing Abraham. But that story shows us that God acts in his own way in time. And we cannot always avoid the struggles of the family life. God's promises don't take those things away. Oftentimes, it seems like God is not answering our prayers in those regards. But he's with us because, as we all know, Jesus went through just as rough of a family life as many of us have probably all experienced. First of all, we show, see this in how Jesus chose his family, Mary and Joseph. He didn't choose two people with a really rich and secure families. He didn't choose somebody powerful where he could be raised up in a very easy and pampered lifestyle. Jesus chose Mary and Joseph, two humble people from humble families, born of the line of David, but in their own lives, living very simple lives. 
And of course, before they even got married, there was difficulties. Our Lord, at the Annunciation, Mary received the incarnate Lord in her womb, even before her marriage to Joseph. And so, a scandal in those days, they would have accused Mary of adultery, and then all of the punishment for that is stoning. And so, right at the beginning, the Holy Family's family life begins with scandal and struggle. And I'm sure, even though Mary wasn't stoned and Joseph took her into his home, I'm sure there's much whispering. There's a lot of village gossip about the unusual circumstances of their betrothal and marriage. And then even after that, we have, often here, we know the story of Christmas, of how they had to pick up and go to Nazareth for the census, even as she was heavily pregnant, and travel in those days is very hard. She had to give birth in a manger, and then flee to Egypt from the murderous Herod's orders to kill the child. And then living and raising their family in a foreign land without family support, probably didn't know anybody. Amongst those who had no, no conception of their customs or how Jews live. And then making their way back from there, back to Nazareth, another long journey. And then finally, uh, and we also hear that the story of Jesus, 12 years old, when his family loses him in Jerusalem. I'm sure a story many parents can relate to, losing their children in a supermarket or something like that. So the story of Jesus' home life is, uh, is a story of many, many struggles, many challenges. And then finally, the passing of Joseph, sometime between that, that story of Jesus being lost in the temple at 12 and his public ministry. And so our Lord did not exempt himself from the struggle of family life. He embraced that reality and embraced the family and all that comes with it. And what the Holy Family shows and all that they struggled with is that love and joy is found in the midst of struggle and suffering. Not in a perfect, ideal life that we like to picture. A good family is not one that is that Facebook perfect moments. It is the one that's committed to the will of God and sharing his love. The family is the seabed of faith, and it is nurtured in good times and in bad. Children grow to know and love their parents, and also learn how to face adversity, and are, preparing, are being prepared to face the challenges of their adulthood when they have to stand up for themselves and witness to the gospel. And so that is what we have to remember. The family prepares children for the larger family of the church, God's family, the one where they're adopted into. God's family is also characterized by love, but also suffering. We live in a world that rejects God in many ways and will cause us to doubt him. Just like how Abraham, it would have been easy for him to doubt, it would have been easy for Joseph to doubt all these miraculous events, all these big promises, and yet all the waiting and patience, all the difficulty, it's easy to doubt. But Christians raised in a family from their birth, raised in love and joy, and also learning how to face the consequences and difficulties of family life, will stand strong against the world and bear witness to Christ. The Holy Family was brought by Christ into the world, had brought Christ into the world to redeem the world. And our families also bring up little Christ, those who are baptized, who are reborn in the church, into God, to participate in the Lord's act of salvation. We all have our part to play in God's plan and mission for salvation. And so when you struggle, you know that that God is there with you, and that our Lord struggled and suffered as well. I encourage you to place the Holy Family at the heart of your own family. Asking Jesus, Mary, and Joseph to be there with you and to walk with you. Lighting your way through the darkness to the inescapable joy that is prepared for all of us.